I have defeated my first raid boss in Guild Wars 2. Oh, it was good. Let's go. In my first eight hours of trying Guild Wars 2, the game really didn't present much to me in terms of multiplayer content. I could see all these people running around doing various things, but I was never like prompted to do something with them. Uh, and I had no reason to. I, I ran into world bosses and that I did get to do. But in terms of, I knew they existed. This is the thing. I know these dungeons exist. I know they're out there. I, and I know, unfortunately, I couldn't be as blind as I could possibly be about Guild Wars 2. I was 100% aware that at some point, ArenaNet decided dungeons were not for them. So I knew that before I'd even turned the game on, before I'd even downloaded it. And obviously, I am super interested as to what went wrong there, especially in a game that has ditched the Holy Trinity. The tank healer DPS roles don't exist, and that's the same of games like Lost Ark. So I was like, hmm, how did they do this? What went wrong with dungeons? And eventually, I received a letter in the mail, which was like, and there's dungeons i was like ah now it's happening and i was invited by mail that there was an issue in the ascalonian catacombs which was to be my first dungeon in guild wars 2 and also my first introduction to the party finder and and creation uh what i found interesting is you cannot start a group for a dungeon if a group already exists it, if you it, it, it the system goes Oh, you're trying to make a group for this dungeon? There's already one that's trying to be made, so we're just going to put you in that one. Uh, it doesn't allow that, you know, so if you look at World of Warcraft, for example, the Mythic Plus key, there's a bunch of different groups doing the same dungeon at the same difficulty, things like that. In this one, it's it's basically like the LFD finder. It will just pair you up immediately with a group where it has a slot available for you. And as there's no Holy Trinity, it's just like there's a group going, there's a free spot in it, go, uh, get in there, which made it a little difficult to get a full blind group. Uh, which is what I'm always hoping for in PvE content. So not knowing the system yet, I went along and clearly there were dudes in there who knew exactly what to happen. And what an awful experience. <laughs> I wish I could say something different, but it was fucking garbage. Oh, it was so bad. Um, for a number of reasons. One, I was definitely carried. Um, there, was, uh, there was a section in this dungeon where... It, I don't know what ArenaNet was thinking, but there must be 20 spawns of things in a room one by one with like a five or six seven second gap between i felt like i was there for an hour just waiting in this room as a little rumble of earth happened go and stand there kill the thing wait for another one to spawn and the dude who was with us and no offense to him uh, by any means whatsoever he was coming along for the ride uh i'd memorized the spawn locations of every single one of these burrows and it was kind of like amazing to behold. <laughs> it really was. It's just like, oh, and this one's over here and this one's over there. Of all of them in a circle, in a big, big route that they go through. And I was like, this is shit. <laughs> this is so boring. It was terrible. Well, that's probably not why. I mean, I could say the same about Rage Fire Chasm. And I, I remember in FF14, I said the first dungeon I went to, uh, the mines, I hated as well. To the point where uh, Squeenix even revamped that dungeon now. It's nothing like it was the first time I went in. Uh, so I kind of gave it the benefit of the doubt. But I discovered some definite things in there that were really, really interesting. One is that the trash is not te is tethered. Which means if you just run a little bit past the trash, it just resets. So there's no point in doing any of the trash in the dungeons. You just run to the boss. And obviously I'm in a group that clearly knows this. And people were just charging through. And I'm kind of following along. Because we weren't on voice comms or anything. I was just in a pug. Uh, and I was like, okay... We're just running to the bosses between and ignoring everything that's going on in this dungeon. And I was like, Ugh. so not an exciting experience, but um, it was what it was. It was what it was. Nothing we can really do. Jesus Christ. This is, uh, this is a rough one, Arena Net. This is a rough idea for an encounter. But thankfully, thankfully after that, I was a little bit more careful. Once I learned, I had to create like a private party and I was very fortunate. So the average player probably isn't going to get this experience is I was able to sort of ask my stream is like, look, I'm looking for people who are around my level because thankfully a lot of you have come on this journey with me, uh, which is great. We've got a guild set up with people in there. And so I was like, okay, who's here? Who's around my level? Who's not done the dungeons yet? We can get in. And we did manage to get that together. 
uh, for our next dungeon. And I had so much better time here where we were all kind of an equal, not knowing where to go, what we needed to do, all those kinds of things. So we went to like Citadel of Flame, Sorrow's Embrace as I leveled up to the level cap and got all these uh, dungeons out of my system. But I can absolutely see why they abandoned them because they make no sense in guild wars 2 with the way those dungeons are designed and the lack of holy trinity they're just it's like a it's like a story-based horde mode is what i would say and if you're looking for gear this is just not the way to do it i did find the three root exploration system kind of interesting so although the story beats which is what i did uh for the most part is a set route to take you through the story of why you're there which then leads into the main story of the game uh that was great but once you've done that and you get a couple of more levels you then get exploration mode where you can all vote on a different route with different bosses through that dungeon and do extra bosses that you didn't see the first time so you might have you say your story mode is like straight through the middle you then can do option two which will take you around the left side and bring you to a final boss or option three which goes down around a different route entirely i like that Every dungeon basically got three dungeons. They really put some effort into this. It's a real shame it didn't work out for them, but I can totally see why. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense. Ludicrous amounts of experience, though. Oh, Jesus. Ludicrous amounts of experience. Absolutely ludicrous amounts of experience. There's a level and a half to two levels per dungeon, and there's a few, quite a few of them that I got up there while doing the uh, leveling process. But, of course, I hit level cap. I said that in the last video. We have the level cap, and then the first message I got in the mail again was, have you heard about fractals? Now, I had heard about fractals. Yes, I have. I heard this is the system that replaced dungeons entirely. And it seems that they did launch with the base of the game. I was really surprised by this. And this is basically Guild Wars' 2 version of Mythic Plus. So I'm doing... The way the rules I've set for myself is I'm doing the content as the game presents it to me. On the I'm trying... In the back of my mind, I know certain things exist like raids. But I've not been invited to do a raid by the game. I've not been told to go and do a raid. Uh, there's nothing that's been like, and now you've unlocked raids, right? Like you would get in WoW and things like that. Is you know, there'd be some sort of story that leads you to the raid. You might get a quest like go and kill Razageth. You're like, oh, that's the raid. Uh, I haven't had that, but I did get a letter to go and see Fractals. So off I went on my merry way. Did not know their five man content. Now, this is on me. This is absolutely on me. Uh, there is a note that says recommended five people, but I didn't see that. And so. I created what I would only de uh, describe as the most frustrating experience uh, for the people who are watching along with this in that I spent 45 minutes trying to do the first fractal on my own and it's designed for five people. I kind of got it, almost. <laughs> I figured out the mechanics that I'm good at. That I'm very, very good at. Uh, but uh, did not have the damage of five people <laughs> at all. Uh, tried to scam it with some line of sight and stuff like that, but I didn't get there. Ultimately, I was like, I don't think I could do this. Maybe and my assumption was, because again, I'm not reading my chat uh, while this is happening, is my assumption was, oh, I probably just need more gear because I hadn't done any gearing at that point. I'd kind of just like unlocked it. So I was like, oh, cool. We'll go and check this thing out. Uh, and I was working on the assumption that if it's a solo experience, which I thought it was, then you would it would scale appropriately for level one would be for freshly dinged characters and it would scale up like mythic plus would uh that is not the case <laughs> that's not the case it's for five. Oh, okay so why did it let me in straight away without a cue hmm. i didn't get a heads up about that <laughs> Uh, but then I spent the afternoon doing fractals. What a joy. What an absolute joy. These are so creative and so fun and so short. These are things you can do on your lunch break. Nice and quickly with daily challenges and things like that. And I got to do a whole variety of these fractal dungeons. Um, all I think we did like 10 or 12 different variants of them. And it was my first brief introduction into how guild wars 2 handles actual group mechanics something i was so looking forward to and i did not get that from dungeons the biggest mechanic i found through doing the dungeons was picking up rocks or stones and throwing them at things that were far away that mechanic came back like 12 times or something it was just frustrating uh but in fractals all kinds of different stuff uh that i got to try out you know jumping in the air getting low gravity 
uh, mini puzzles that were going on in between the bosses. Um, some very cool spread and do everything was very obvious. Like once I saw it, I knew it. Familiar is what I would say. It was very familiar with my MMO experience and a similar experience experience to many of you. Is like, oh, this kind of makes sense. What it's asking me to do, even though it's presented in a slightly different way, they've got their own twist on presented it. It's like, oh, this kind of makes sense. It fits in. I had an absolute joy in that. And then realized something strange is that there's a sort of miasma mechanic uh, called agony that exists in fractals. And you need re agony resistance in order to progress further along this infinitely scaling path, this mythic plus style path. And I can only get that with something called ascended gear. And so checking the vendors, they don't drop ascended gear. So I don't know where that comes from. I was looking, I was like, oh, it would make sense to me that if you need ascended gear with agony resistance to survive fractals, then fractals would provide ascended gear, right? That does not appear to be the case. <laughs> that does not appear to be the case. So fractals is something I'm going to revisit later. I spent the afternoon doing them, but I didn't want to get bogged down in that with the other options I've got to go for. Because another letter I received was for World versus World. Now, I remember when Guild Wars 2 was advertised. And World vs. World was one of their biggest selling points. Uh, that each server would have a war with the other servers. Uh, that's how it would work. So your entire server is at war against other servers. And there's like three things going on. So I dabbed into World vs. World for a little bit. I'd say maybe a couple of hours max. Um, not a fan yet. I need to revisit a bit more. I was sort of captivated by the idea that you're overtaking territory you can build siege vehicles uh you can pick up blueprints and resources it's kind of like a much 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 better warfront uh from wow uh like an alter you no know, more realistically like a, a way bigger alterac valley because i think it's 250 players aside and so far i've not experienced any lag with players in guild wars 2 which is very surprising with the sheer numbers of players we've been dealing with um, and we went off on uh, a, a very sort of sideways mission, uh, like the infiltrator group that you would have in AV, where you're like, I'm going to sneak ahead and take over the towers and do things like that. Uh, so we took our little motley crew of guildies and went on a little journey around the map uh, to try and take over some bases. And we did. We captured some territory. We took down some NPC bosses. We killed some players. And then I bumped into what I feared might be in there, which was the Zerg. And it definitely felt, at least in my couple of hours, very limited experience, that World versus World is like a, a swarm of bees on each team that is just, okay, now we go here and like 250 people <laughs> rock up on you. Uh, when I saw the swarm coming, I eventually did meet up with our commander uh, on the map and the our Zerg team. And I was sort of positioned on the outside of a castle uh, when suddenly I saw the Zerg coming and I was dead before I knew what was going on. So I, I need to revisit this. I'm not rendering final judgment is what I would say. I'm not rendering final judgment. I'm just like, okay, I hope this isn't just Zerg versus Zerg. Whoever wins, wins as everybody tosses out their AOE as fast as they can. And everyone sort of puts out healing as much as they can uh, to try and survive and dodge and do all things like that. But well, I'll, I'll reserve my judgment on that. I've collected a bunch of blueprints so I can build things in World versus World. I've collected a bunch of experience boosters just from do playing the game which are for world versus world so i need to revisit it essentially just to spend my currency and try it out a bit more but it was interesting then something cool happened so i have done at this point living world season one i'll have a separate video on the living world system because the whole living world system is really cool uh really really cool and not what i thought it was at all uh but along with that came something called a strike now if you play ff it's basically a trial, uh, which is something I think WoW is very much missing. And of course, part of this project is looking at like what can the other games borrow from each other that really work, like good systems. And one thing WoW has been missing for a while and used to have it, which is, makes me a little bit sad, is one-off raid boss encounters, just singular encounters. So you're Anixias, uh, where you just go and you just fight that. You're, you know, these, these fun things that you can do that aren't a whole raid just one-off encounters that are really cool and a strike turns out to be one of those and this is basically my first raid boss and i was super excited and it was amazing it took me a little while to find a full blind group but i will tell you now i don't care whether you believe me or not it's a full blind group it's an entire group of people who have no idea about this and that's what we want and i, th I think i should stress this stress this at a point because we had a same sort of reaction in my stream chat as some people will have 
is my purpose and my joy comes from figuring things out and overcoming those challenges. It's the most fun I can have. Raid boss progress is my joy. It's my pleasure. Uh, killing the boss, I don't really care about too much. Like going in and killing the boss. So I know a lot of the people who are like checking out what we're doing. We're like, why wouldn't you just like, we can carry you. This isn't hard for us. We've done this boss a ton of times. Like just join the group and we'll organize it for you and we'll get you done. It's like, no, that's not what we want to do. Uh, what I want to do is experience it. I want that experience of what's going on. Uh, so the triumph for it was the war. The old old Lion's Arch something, something like that. Uh, but it was the triumph for it. Okay, Arena Net. <laughs> There's no Holy Trinity. Well, and this was an eye-opening experience. Before I get to the real joy of the fight, um, let's talk about this Holy Trinity business. So, a lot of what I was told and experienced from the marketing guild was to, is there's no Holy Trinity anymore. Everyone plays for themselves. We're not we're breaking the mold. Clearly, at some point, and I don't know the exact point this happened, they went, that doesn't really work when we make giant boss encounters. <laughs> or we can't make them do what we want them to do if we don't really have the Holy Trinity. And it turns out there are absolutely healers in the game. I did not know that until this point. I swear to you, I did not know. I had no idea. Uh, until I saw um, that we were just kind of dying, and then people were like, I could go with more healing build, I guess. Uh, and then we we essentially ended up with two healers. I did like how tanking works in this fight. I have no idea. I, I just want to be sure, clear on this. This is the only boss I've done in a 10-man raid environment. So this is my first ever 10-man situation, and uh, getting into it was exciting. Uh, so I, 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 I didn't do any class makeups or subgroups makeup so i should explain what this is for those who've not played guild wars 2 is they have a very retro wow style group synergy setup i'm talking like burning crusade uh where you you wanted a really you wanted like certain boons buffs that are group wide in certain groups to spread that amongst the five players and then you want another group that also has all these buffs and things like that like such as speed and it turns out and i didn't i didn't really read the boons because my character doesn't actually provide any um that they're extraordinarily powerful like 50 percent critical strike bonus 10 percent straight up damage bonus like some really really strong group buffs that exist and i didn't know so our first day of progress which was probably like three hours maybe uh we didn't have any boons in the group <laughs> we didn't know about them <laughs> uh like some people were mentioning is like should we make subgroups and stuff like that and i was like i don't know uh i don't know i didn't know that group buffs existed in this level i had no idea i can't in fact I, i'm so noob to this and uh this is a learning curve is i do have a, a group buff that i can put out called uh right of the great dwarf i think it is which is a 50 percent damage reduction it's awesome and so i assumed i was buffing the raid with it so i was raid leading because i love doing that uh, and I'm like, hey, stay together during this run away from the boss mechanic and I'll provide us with uh, uh, the 50% the damage reduction. So we're all good. And then later on, some people are like, I don't think I'm getting it, even though I'm staying with you. And then it was like, oh, it's limited to the group. It'll only hit those five players. It's not going to hit anyone else. And I was like, oh, shit. I thought I was buffing the whole fucking group because it only lasts a few seconds. Uh, and it, no, it does not work that way at all. So this was all part of the learning experience of being in the raid. But what a learning experience it is. So healers totally exist in Guild Wars 2. They absolutely exist. Uh, and also tanking exists because it worked, at, at least in this fight, it works on proximity. The closest person to the boss becomes marked as the tank. And I, we couldn't figure out for ages what the hell this fucking, why certain people were getting this color thing above the head and that tanking was super important, but it makes sense. You can have raid encounters. You want them to be challenging. You have to include things like boss positioning. It has to be done correctly. If you want to, inc you have to include levels of damage that can kill the players and not that everybody can each individually survive. It's the nature of the beast. Otherwise you just have people dodging left and right all the time, especially when you go into 10 man and you can do that, but it gets kind of old after a little while. Uh, but you can't you you open up a bunch of other doorways if you've got like okay We can do really dangerous moments here because healers are gonna have to play well and we can do really dangerous uh, Positional things because tanks can adjust and move the bosses around uh, Effectively, so let me start deciding tanks and things out Anyway, what I loved about this fight and we killed it very quickly on the second day So it totally probably took four hours to defeat this fight which 
I don't know. I imagine this fight is considered very, very easy. What I can tell you is after the first day, I realized I needed to do a bit more research, which is what I would do, such as what are my spell rotations? I didn't know. I was going off what felt the best, and I was pretty close, actually, which was similar to POE. We were like pretty, pretty damn close to what's good. Most common sense things do apply. Uh, but most, uh, most interestingly, I found out that I was doing a lot of weapon swapping, and uh, with the current build I was using, that was not worthwhile. Um, and uh, doing something slightly different was good. So I did a little bit of research on how your classes play, just as you guys would do as well. Uh, and that gave me a whopping DPS of just under 8k. And the predicted DPS on the website was 35. I was like, huh. <laughs> Am I doing something catastrophic, so catastrophically wrong with a spec that effectively in like active DPS combat uses like four buttons that I'm doing like less than a quarter of the damage, essentially? Uh, huh. No. So I assume a lot of it's going to come from the elite spec, which I don't have yet. I, I've unlocked it, but that needs a, some expansion stuff to really get going for the most part. And I'm not there yet. So I'm having to use a core build, uh, which is way, way less. So I was a little worried going into this raiding car that I was kind of going to be carried if I was doing something wrong. So I kind of double checked to make sure it was good because DPS felt low. Uh, but it turned out, actually, like, with a little bit of group setup. So before we went in on the second day, we just ran out of time. It wasn't like we gave up on day one. We just ran out of time. I had to go. Uh, but we got the boss to 17%. The boss was doable. That was clear to me. The boss was absolutely doable. And then I got that hunger for progress. It's like, we're killing it tomorrow. Uh, and when we got the group back together tomorrow, most of the same people came back because uh, they wanted to kill it as well. And they'd been part of the progress of seeing how the mechanics work and things like that. Uh, I did this bit of research and learned a bit more about boons and basically just rejigged the groups, uh, causing a, tr a dramatic DPS increase across the board and happily came out like third on damage. I uh, was not carried at all, which was a big relief for me because I was kind of worried as somebody who's not using a damage meter that maybe I was getting carried here. But no, not the case. Everybody doing same sort of things, working as hard as they could and characters similar to mine in order to effectively bring down the raid boss. So every all, all things are equal. Uh, what I really loved about this though, and this is what changed the minds of a lot of people who didn't understand this blind raid approach. Everything was so clear. Any puzzle problems that we had that we couldn't figure out, such as there were red circles dropping in the encounter that we were really unsure about. It's like, how are these red circles occurring? Because they cause area denial. And then we sat and we talked about it and everyone was throwing ideas out and theories. And I've noticed this happening and I noticed it here. And I think this is happening. And then we gradually sort of pieced it together. And it kind of made sense as well with the nature of how the bosses work because each of them worked slightly differently. And then the constant rising tension of more of the bosses you fight. It's three bosses and you fight one and you fight them individually and then there's two of them and then the finale is all three. Uh, it all kind of fell into place nicely and what an absolute joy to progress. And it was nice that one of the arena net devs came and sat with us in game. Uh, obviously, had been watching this progress uh, of what a joy it was. Bring it home. Stay close. Do not put a red circle under us. And that's the first boss killed in Guild Wars 2, baby! <laughs> Hot damn! Hot damn! Oh, woo! <sighs> That was really, really nice. That was really, really nice. What a GG. I'm really so happy to see raid encounters that I... That I think the worst thing we ever run into is raid encounters, uh, or big boss encounters, and you're just not sure what the hell is going on. Uh, and you'll, you even, no matter how much you look at it, you're like, I don't know. This, I don't know how this works. I always think back to patchwork hateful strikes back in the day where no one could figure out how that damn mechanic worked. Uh, but everything here was very familiar, very cozy, like putting on a glove again uh, as to how that worked. So that's my strike done. Really extraordinarily happy with that. Got some currency, which sim seems similar to Valor Points, which will get me some very high level gear, actual upgrades. In the last video, the gearing had actually scared me a bit, but now I'm getting some currency, which will lead to genuinely really good upgrades, like probably BIS, uh, BIS stuff, which is nice, but I'm going to leave that behind. I'm not looking to clear that yet. I want to move into the expansions uh, and get on with more living world stuff. 
Uh, so that was really cool. The only other group thing I wanted to talk about multiplayer wise are these. Um, I'm, I'm still a bit iffy on the terminology. Is what I'll say. Uh, is I did some stuff which was 50 man instances. Which I was shocked. I didn't know they existed. Uh, 50 man public instances. Uh, slash meta events. Slash whatever. These huge, huge things. And I did one, uh, this is a bit touching on Living World, but I did one called the Tower of Nightmares or the Tower of Darkness, something like that. Some sort of edgy tower name. <laughs> and it was just the worst experience. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> it was just a cluster of people all over the place, all lost in this maze that the Arena Nets created. And it's just horrible. It's absolutely horrible. And I know that like parts of that whole raid instance thing were done. And I was just on the bottom floor. Like, where is everybody? What's going on? And then you would see a group of people wandering around. It's like, well, I'll follow them. But they're also lost. Uh, and it was the strangest 30 minutes I've had in Guild Wars 2. It was just strange. I'm not saying it was bad. It was just weird. But the overall experience was pretty awful. Pretty bad. I've done a couple diff since then as I went through the story, such as the Battle for Lion's Arch. And that was better. Uh, because it was an open area and you could see everybody on the map and it was just a flat open world so it was like okay we're going there and there was markers on the map of what you needed to kill in the area that was better but there are so many different types of group content for a game that didn't present anything to me at the start now there's like a load of them a, like a lot of options uh, that are going on all of which i intend to revisit and i still haven't touched a, an actual raid the strikes are individual one-off bosses, as far as I know. At least that's what I've done. I haven't seen a raid yet, and I've not been invited to a raid. I know where the raid lobby is, because it's a big icon on the map saying raids here, basically. I haven't gone in there yet. Not ready for that yet. We're tr I'm trying to... I'm des I, I, This game did not launch with raids. I didn't know that. And I was shocked. I reached the level cap. I was like, oh, okay, where's the raid? And then it's like, there's no raid. I mean, they're in the game now, but I'm trying to work through things chronologically because so I can see how this content developed and how ArenaNet shaped Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2 launched without a raid. Shocking. Shocking. It was just one of those things that I take for granted would have existed, and I was kind of really looking forward to what their first raid was, and there isn't one. So, I mean, there is a first raid. It's just not in the core base guild wars 2 it must come with one of the expansions i don't know which i have no idea there's several expansions i don't know uh so i'm i was a little shocked and that's when i found out about the strike there's a strike there's no raid and i was like huh the end game was like fractals and i was like right weird so so strange and every day of, along this journey it's been an eye-opening experience but so far so good I'm going to come back to you next about the living world. So the living world, as far as uh, well, I know now, I have done it now. But my impression of it before I did it was that these were supplemental pieces, uh, supplemental like filler patches. So we can look at it in WoW terms, like you get the story that comes with the release of the expansion, and then we get some sort of different story beats throughout the expansion. So that's what I thought they were. Kind of? Uh, kind of, uh, it, it, in terms of FF, it would be like post MSQ storyline that leads, uh, that's joining things together for what the next thing is. Um, but that's a bit of what they are. But they're a lot more than that. And it's something that, if you've watched our Ian Hazacosta's full interview, especially that's available on our website, website, and it'll be on YouTube soon, you will know that I asked them about something that they said basically no to, which I thought would be a big, big help to world of warcraft but they're, they're for their resource allocation they they can't afford it essentially and it's um it's interesting so tune back in for living world see you again guys bye, -bye.